This uh, comes from Harbinger's Daily. Uh, I don't go to Harbinger's Daily looking for truth. Uh, I go to Harbinger's Daily looking for content, things to talk about. Uh, they are uh, self-proclaimed Acts 2 dispensationalists. So, you know, they get some stuff right, and they got, and then there's a lot of mud all over this, this website. Um, and here was a, an argument. Uh, here's an argu- article called The Most Persistent Lie Leveled Against the Rapture. I said, oh, I'm totally reading this one. And uh, it actually turned out to be really good. I was shocked. We, we I had a good article. There was a good article here, although there's a lot of mistakes. But uh, Jonathan Brentner, um, I should have guessed he's he's very uh, pro rapture. Uh, so basically, the point he says is that, uh, you know, the most consistent argument that he has heard against the rapture was that it was invented by Darby, mm-hmm. J. N. Darby. And uh, he says, if anyone tells you that this teaching originated with John Darby, they are either purposely misleading you or have themselves been the victim of someone deceiving them about the origin of our blessed hope. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. Um, So I'm already interested. He had a um, uh, he had uh, Let's see here we find references to the rapture and he quotes all the right, a lot of the correct references, except it starts with John 14, two and three, <laughs> which is in my father's house are many mansions. Man. If it were not so, I would not, I would have told you, um, I go to, uh, I go to a pl- prepare a place for you. And if I, go, that has nothing to do, I, that's, that's nothing to do with us. Absolutely. Total, total, total mud. Um, but everything else is good. Everything else is Pauline. And that's the point about the rapture. It is distinctly Pauline. You get there to first Corinthians. He says, behold, I show you I... first Corinthians 15. I show you a seek of mystery. Uh, what's the secret he's revealing? Oh yeah. This thing called the, that we call the rapture. Uh, he makes the point too, which I, I, I had forgotten. You know, people complain about using the word rapture because that's not a Bible word. My response to that was always, well, you know what else isn't a Bible word? Bible. Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Show me a verse that has Bible in your scriptures. Now the Bible call the, the whole the Bible calls it scriptures. The Lord calls his writing scriptures in, in the text. Uh, in any event, but he makes the point here that rapture was actually in the Latin Vulgate to uh, that was the, the rapturo was the word they used to translate caught up in First Thessalonians yeah, four seventeen. I I had heard that, but I had forgotten. I might have heard so then he goes to Dispensationalism Before Darby, and that was the book I had always referred to when talking about people who believed in the rapture before Darby. And he says that uh, Dr. Watson, who wrote that book, lists 10 instances of Bible scholars using the word rapture, beginning with Joseph Mead, in 1627 through the time of Thomas Broughton, an English pastor, in 1768. In the centuries after the Reformation, the usage of the word rapture to describe the event depicted in 1 Thessalonians 4.17 became commonplace in many Protestant churches. In a letter that he wrote about the verses, Joseph Mead used the word rapture six times when referring to this verse. So this this word was common before Darby ever, 100 year, 200 and 100 years before Darby ever came on the scene. Even though Joseph Mead didn't uh, place Jesus' appearing before the start of the tribulation period, uh, his usage of the word rapture establishes a 400-year history of Bible students using the word rapture to refer to uh, the, to the event that the Apostle Paul wrote about in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. So then he goes through the history of the rapture, the belief in the rapture in church history. And I think all of this, you can read about all of this in uh, Dispensationalism Before Darby. Number one, in A.D. 180, uh, Irenaeus, <laughs> I had to look up how to pronounce his name, Irenaeus, <laughs> Uh, wrote against heresies to refute the errors of Gnosticism, which posed a great threat to the church at the time. In Against Heresies, Book 5, Chapter 29, he wrote, And therefore, when in the end the church shall be suddenly caught up from this, 
It is said there shall be tribulation such as has not been since the beginning, neither shall be. This is in A.D. 180. Would he be a mid-trib? Uh, no, that's a, that, that statement screams uh, pre to me. And therefore, well, when I, I think of the, you know, the first half being wrath. Oh, yeah, he being, might. Yeah, he might make a distinction there. I don't but know. It doesn't necessarily mean he's. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean he's not pre-trib. It's just. You know, I'm reading that. I had gotten a distinct pre-trib uh, vibe there, but you may be right. I hadn't. I hadn't. Yeah. Uh, so he says uh, in the above quote, Ire Irenaeus used the same Greek word for caught up harpezo that Paul used in 1 Thessalonians 4.17 for the Lord catching up living believers to meet him in the air. Irenaeus uh, specifically placed the fulfillment of this verse ahead of the time of tribulation uh, that Jesus referred to in Matthew 24, and thus the before the second coming, which the Lord said would happen after his time of judgment on the earth. And then he gives us a, a verse, Matthew 247, verse 29, <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's a Freddie that's, mistake yeah that's uh that's a book i'd like to read actually uh if he had that many more chapters um and then he goes to cyprian cyprian ad 210 to 258 a bishop of carthage guided his church through a period of intense persecution and suffering during which time he also became a martyr, and he wrote a book called the Treatise of Treatises of Cyprian, and he wrote, "We who see that terrible things have begun, and know that still more terrible things are imminent, may regard it as the greatest advantage to depart from it as quickly as possible. <laughs> Do you not give God thanks? Do you not congratulate Amen. yourself that by an early departure you are taken away and delivered from the shipwrecks and disasters that are imminent? Let us greet the day which assigns each of us to his own home, which snatches us hence and sets us free from the snares of the world and restores us to paradise and the kingdom. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Cyprian believed in an early departure of the church before uh, further disasters occurred on the earth, and he believed the time of additional trouble was imminent, and thus also the departure. He believed that the Lord would take believers out of the world so they wouldn't experience the troubling times ahead for those left behind. His reference to snatches us, Sounds just like the catching up of the church yeah. in First Thessalonians 4.17. Cyprian's beliefs signify a 3rd century A.D. belief in a pre-tribulational rapture. Right. Amen. Uh, there's another one. And that's a key distinction, I mean, to make it pre-tribulation rapture. That's right. Rapture. That's right. That's right. And the thing is, church history was written, written by the heretics, <laughs> not the true believers. Uh, so you barely get references and mentions. I think mid-Acts dispensationalism largely existed, going all the way back to Paul. Her church history just didn't record it. Uh, right, Brian, yeah, sure. uh, Pastor Brian Ross thinks the same thing. I think that we always existed. We were always tiny. And, um, you know, nobody is going to record in church history the existence of the mid-Acts grace movement today. That's exactly right. Um, we so, will not appear. So this other example here. Pre-tribulational rapture taught from Ephra Ephraim, hmm. Ephraim of Edessa, who was a poet, a writer of hymns, and a preacher. So you have this quote here that was from a, a, a Ephraim's sermon titled, On the Last Times, the Antichrist and the End of the World. Uh, it says, some historians believe someone else wrote it. Uh, I'm going to skip over all that. Um, and this is what he said. Believe you me, dearest brother, <laughs> because the coming, the advent of the Lord is nigh. Believe you me, because the end of the world is at hand. Believe me, because it is the very last time. Or do you not believe unless you see with your eyes? See to it that this sentence be not fulfilled among you of the prophets who declares. And then he says, Woe to those who desire to see the day of the Lord, for all the <laughs> saints and elect of God are gathered prior to the tribulation that is to come, 
and are taken to the Lord, lest they see the confusion that is to overwhelm the world because of our sins. Hmm. That's an amazing statement. That's, that's uh, and it's AD, AD 323. Yeah, seemed very like a, a deep, well thought out statement. That's that's amazing. I love that statement. Um. So then he gets back to the point here. This attempt to discredit the rapture by making it seem as though it's a relatively new and thus unfounded belief is an effort to divert our focus from what the Bible teaches us about our blessed hope. Amen. The witness of church history confirms that the scripturally sound doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture existed in the earliest centuries of the church. I love that. That's great. 